Welcome into another great episode of Living in San Diego, joined by my guest, Bob Weller. And we're going to be talking about the best universities in San Diego today. Let's just get started. Sure, Hanish. Um, I'm, it's an honor to be here, sitting on the Escondido Union High School District. Uh, it's been a big eye-opening to what goes on in colleges and universities and high schools around. I look forward to sharing with you. You know, the first name that always comes to mind when you think of San Diego and colleges is University of California, San Diego, UCSD. Absolutely. And why do you think that's one of the top choices here? Well, I mean, they've just completely done an amazing job in the whole uh, biotech field, uh, engineering. They, you know, I mean, they, they only allow, they bring in top students from around the world in there. They hold them very much accountable to the grades and heavy course load. I mean, I know kids that go there are teenagers, adults. And they are work very hard at that university. It's uh, known for their hard sciences. Yeah, hard sciences. Right, you're getting you're getting your good stuff that way. On the flip side, it's in a good location, which makes it tough for off-campus housing. In fact, even for on-campus housing, I see a lot of cranes up there. They're building a lot of big buildings, and they're exempt from coastal commission, so they're building huge buildings there. They're exempt from coastal commission, which is cool to see them uh, putting up some buildings there. Because one of the bigger complaints that I've heard. Um, cause I did get involved. I was a chapter counselor for a fraternity okay. at UCSD for okay. a while. Um, is that they said they consistently rank as one of the lowest in terms of uh, how much fun they're having on campus. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. In terms of, so p people complain that it's one of the least fun places least to fun be. Least fun places to go. Which is an important part of college experience. I have to say, you definitely want to enjoy your time there. Cause I mean, it's, it's, it's grueling doing the work and you do want to blow off steam and have fun. For sure. Yeah. So the, you know, there's no doubt that they have intramurals and clubs that you can join. Um, but they don't really have like big sports teams. You're not going to get a football team. You're not gonna get the basketball team to go watch. Um, and because you're in an area where the average house is five to $15 million, there's probably not many students living in nearby off-campus housing totally. to throw your off-campus ragers. So just something, something to consider if, if you're going to UCSD, if you want to have a more balanced experience, you're going to get your schooling done, but you're going to have to travel to PB, SDSU, Tijuana to um, get in your more college yeah. evening and afternoon, uh, evening and weekend fun. Yes, it's uh, it's interesting. I, most of the engineers, though, that I do know there, that are studying there, they their their social life is kind of limited almost to christmas vacation and summers and, and they've gone down that path and if you love it then that works right? yeah you know and it's okay to delay a little gratification for later you need a balance so you don't have burnouts and anxiety attacks and panic attacks and stuff like that because you're stressed and it's competitive um, you need to have a little balance of that 100 percent. yeah i agree totally so ucsd great school to go to i'd be happy if any of my kids went there it's close by i know they do a great education um and you can learn to have fun anywhere. Yes, you can. You definitely can. And you can always just go to the beaches. For sure. It's be beautiful location. Yeah, there's nice hiking trails uh, nearby with Torrey Pines just north of it. So great location. Let's keep I, moving on. Yeah. So then I guess the biggest one in San Diego would be uh, San Diego State, University of California of San Diego. What a great draw. Tell me more about this place. What are their, their top programs? Who goes there? Well, a number of the people in real estate in San Diego that I know have actually graduated with a business degree from San Diego State. Yeah. And, you know, they they were born and raised in San Diego. <clears throat> they wanted to stay in San Diego. They got their business major there and they're quite, they've been quite successful. They, you know, they did a good job of taking the business courses and understanding finance and marketing at the school there. Yeah. So they got business, they got psychology, they got kinesiology. They got big sports there too, right? They got a big football team. They got a big basketball team. Some years they're in the top 20s. Yeah. And some years they're not, but that's hard being a top team all the time. So pretty good for a fair weather city where we've got fair weather fans. And um, because it's nice. You'd rather go play basketball than watch it sometimes. In, so, your, in your mind, you know, you have this idea about colleges and universities and the whole camaraderie around football games in the fall, like we're going through right now, and the basketball in the winter. And, you know, the football games are sold out at Snapdragon Stadium now. What is that seat now? Like 20 grand, 20,000? I've heard conflicting information. It holds 35,000. Oh, really? And the first game, the season opener, they only had half attendance. Would have never thought. So um, it's a beautiful venue. I haven't been there yet. I've seen pictures and videos and I've seen it driving by. They're going to expand on it. I think it's a big draw for the university yeah. that they've got this facility 
which is going to serve as San Diego State West or something like that as an auxiliary campus. So they'll be building housing there and classrooms and amenities that the university can use in addition to just the sports field that's going to be used by soccer and football teams. Or yeah, well, I drive, events. I drive by it every day to get to my uh, office in Mission Valley, and there's huge construction going on there right now. They're, they're on the groundwork, the, the dirt, actually. So San Diego State, you know, located a little bit inland. You're going to get a little bit warmer there. They have more of the traditional college experience there with lots of off-campus housing. Yep. Uh, the traditional Greek systems there for fraternity and sorority houses. And um, big draw. I'd probably have 30,000, 40,000 people there, including grad graduate programs as well. Oh, yeah. A lot and, of people. Um, <clears throat> you know, at a certain point, like if you're living in an area that's awesome and, you know, you don't have to necessarily be at the number one school, period. Like, it's okay to go to the number 40 school because there's 2,000 universities out there. Yeah. And if you're anywhere in the top 100, you know, you're doing okay. Yeah, if you're working hard, it really it's a lot of dependent on you. And and if you're doing if you plan to live in San Diego, then think about all the people that stay here after college. And now you've got all that network for your business as well. Whatever. Yeah, you're gonna be I, in. I know very few people that actually leave San Diego. Of course, I once mean, you're here, you're trapped because there's no place as good. Yeah, yeah. As I tell people, there's only two seasons, and that's daylight savings and Standard Time. The only <laughs> difference between the two is it gets dark later. The weather is the same. Pretty much 365 days a year. That's that's way better than the two options of, of weather in Michigan, which is either winter <laughs> or construction. <laughs> I have not heard that. That's super funny. Oh well, yeah, that's, that's, how the, that's how they live there. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's keep moving on. So we got another big university in San Diego, USD. Yes. University of San Diego, by far one of the prettiest campuses. Super location, great views. Um, and they've got a lot of draw they, people, you know, it draws the, um, the, the crowd that likes that private school yep. that likes that Catholic education mm -hmm. that has a chapel on campus that people have beautiful weddings at and, and, and beautiful venues, but they also have sports there too. They do. They do have some sports. I, I uh, saw a soccer game there that was happening. And, uh, even on weekends, they have open gyms. You can get day passes for 10 bucks and I'm using their facilities to go play indoor basketball. I would totally be up for that. That's great. Thank you for that tip. Now it's going to be super crowded up there because of I your hope tip. so. Because last time I went, there's only the six people I invited and we played three on three and there was no one else in there. Really? But it was a football Sunday and maybe people were sitting in front of their TV screens instead of on a nice basketball court. I don't, I don't know. They're also really known for their law school. For sure. A, a number of uh, top attorneys I know have come out of USD. For sure. Yeah, no no uh, shortage of pedigree there in terms of, okay, so they got business management, biology, and social sciences, but you're right. I've heard a lot of lawyers come out of there, um, yeah. and that's a grad program, and it's a beautiful location as well, nice and central in San Diego. Extremely you, central. You couldn't go wrong with either of those three universities for location. It's so, pricey. Do you remember how much this costs? The school? Yeah. I don't know. Do you? $55,000 a year. That, that's pricey. So, you know, I guess with that, you either have a huge amount of debt or you're making friends with rich families. There, so it's interesting that you bring that up because my daughter ended up at a private school in LA. She had given a speech and she got a huge, like a $37,000 a year scholarship. So there's a lot of donors, but wow. they want the kids there. Yep. And so then their foundation and their donors give out a tremendous amount of scholarships. So I think that there are some pretty wealthy families that uh, put their kids there. And yet at the same time, I'm finding a lot of these universities now just have a lot of donors that really care about the next generation. They give quite a bit of money so they can give scholarships. Makes sense. Yeah, good to hear. Okay, a couple other spots that are in our top spots in San Diego. I, I like to, you know, we're, it's the, we have a list, but it's no, no particular order. Point Loma Nazarene. Well, okay, so talking about view, I, I, I would not be able to go there. It's right on the cliffs in Point Loma. Yep. The, the, the view, the weather, the surfing, I mean, it is gorgeous. That is by far the prettiest school in the United States, as far as I'm concerned. I agree. It's right on the ocean, and yeah, you could daydream for, for hours oh, yeah. there. Yeah, They've even just... got some trails where they got hanging swings off of trees where you can just kind of swing in the shade, overlooking right, up, right there on the campus. And it, uh, it is really nice. Uh, but another Christian private school, 44000 a year, and... They're doing business management, health, health professions, and human sciences. Right, it's a my, smaller school. I can't remember the exact enrollment, but probably ten thousand or less. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's less than that. My uh, friend of mine is actually the director of psychology department there, and he's a bright guy, and he really cares about his students. So that's one of the things that, when someone's looking to go to a school, it's like, well, what is the relationship with the professors? And I think that's super important because 
you know, a lot of the bigger universities, you're going to go into a big lecture hall, pop by a, a, you know, a teaching assistant with 500 people. But at Point Loma or USD, you're going to be in there. You're able to just go see the professor at three o'clock in the afternoon and have details. One of the things that if I can change just a little bit, though, because the cost has gotten so expensive, is really looking at the community colleges. Because yeah. all my kids did at least one year there at community college just to knock out the basic things. And um, it, I mean, the, right there, even if you go to a state school, it's going to save you 10 grand. I was talking to another dad about this, and he was saying he was helping his 17-year-old senior do college applications. And he's a good kid, but he might not get into his top choices of Berkeley and da-da-da-da. And so he was saying that he's okay, and so is his son, to go to a junior college to start. He said your admission rates when you transfer from a junior college are double yeah. what they are trying to apply straight out of high school. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, it's a really good way to, to get into and get a degree from the college you ultimately want. Yeah. But one, reduce costs and two, get a little less stress of trying to get in for all four years. Yeah. If you're on the four-year program. Um, but I, I think another consideration is if, if you know what you're going to get into, you know what your profession is, you know what your major is going to be. I think knowing where your alumni are and how involved they are is important because at a lot of these universities, the alumni love helping other alumni. Yeah. And so it really opens doors that way. Where'd you go to college? University of Michigan. Oh, of course. Why did I even ask? Blue. <laughs> oh my gosh. I Isn't there like 55,000 students there now? It's a huge amount. And uh, the cool thing is, is that outside of Michigan, the most alumni for the University of Michigan live in California. For obvious reasons. That's why you started it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So it, it is cool because when we go and do alumni events or they have watch parties, they have to have multiple because there's so many Michigan Wolverines that live in San Diego to get together for the games. Um, but it's nice. You know, you go and you see some familiar faces and they all had the similar experience of dealing with construction and winter seasons, you know, and that's it. I, I grew up across the street from UCLA, so I'm, I now understand why I get booed so much at football uh, parties because, you know, rooting for UCLA and USC, you know, it's pretty rough when Michigan comes in and beats us all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't have any distractions. There's no beach to go waste time at. It's like you hit the gym, and you hit the sleds, and you hit people. That's it. That's all they're doing. <laughs> that's super funny. That's, I mean, I, and I think about that, you know, when I'm like, oh man, I wish I went to college at Arizona State or Point Loma or one of these awesome places with better weather, but I would have been a much worse student personally. If I was distracted by good weather and daylight. Yes. Yeah. Daylight uh, is a thing. Cause like, you know, you, I'd wake up and go to class. It's dark and I'd leave class and it's dark. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm just going to go back and study. I went to school in Denver. I have to say it was, it was difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It but was, it kept you good, uh, as a good student. Yeah. I, yeah. It was. Probably better than if you had great weather and pool parties to go to. Got a couple more to cover real quick. National university. You, you know, they, they cut their teeth on the whole, you know, online uh, college experience. Well, it's also like a part-time thing too. So this is the one you go to if you've got a job, you need to work, but you can do a class in the evening or on the weekend and get a major over a few years or get a gra graduate degree over a few years. Um, so that's what we see. Typically, people are taking one class per month and it's people that are getting their master's and they work full-time jobs, but now they be able to step up their education and demand a pay raise or get a different job elsewhere or whatever it's going to be. But they're great at nursing, business management and psychology. Uh, and you've got multiple locations throughout San Diego, but a lot of it is online as well. You know, it's interesting. Um, it, you brought up the nursing thing. So doing home loans and all, one of one of the groups of people that I, I just don't think they understand how much they can actually afford are nurses. And that industry, I mean, with the aging demographic of the boomers, the amount of needs for nurses, because the schools are not turning out that many doctors, so nurses are really picking up the slack in terms of providing care in the in the hospital. Nurses will make 120 grand a year, no problem, working three to four days a week. Yeah, you know, and so um, that's one of their programs they have there. So it, I, I've got a client right now up in the uh, Central Valley, and he's a nurse, great great kid, and and he's buying his first house. So um, anywhere you can find a nursing program and that can get you to become a registered nurse is it pays off. Yeah. Got to love people in healthcare and taking care of them. And fluids. Yeah. That's and why I can't okay do it. it. <laughs> I can't do the For fluids. sure. I spent a couple of weeks in the ER in high school to see if I wanted to go down the healthcare path. And I was like, nope. No, no. <laughs> Guy came in with his finger in a Ziploc bag. I'm like, this isn't my job. 
<laughs> this is the kind of job I want. <laughs> Let's get the last one. Cal okay. State San Marcos. And there's a lot of California State universities that kind of go up and down uh, the state, which is all in the Cal. You know, it's a, it's, it's a state-sponsored school. They're affordable. A lot of these places have in-state tuition that are half or even a quarter as much as their out-of-state tuition. So yeah, they really keep working hard to keep your, you know, your residents in state. Um, so there's appeal to that because you can go to Cal State San Marcos for eight thousand dollars a year. Yeah, and that's a total bargain. Um, and so, and it's growing as well, and there's demand for it, and it's up in, in San Marcos, which is North County, San Diego. They're doing social sciences, business management, and health professions. So things that are pretty big in San Diego to stay here in San Diego to work, because they do have a lot of hospitals and research facilities, and science is a growing pharma, pharmacy businesses, not pharmacy business, but ph pharma tech, pharma, pharma, tech. Pharma, <laughs> pharma tech companies. So uh, another good option. Uh, it, it's nice to have all these great local education yeah. experiences here in San Diego. We don't have to go to have six big colleges and a bunch more small ones to yeah. choose from is a nice uh, amenity for San Diego. Way easier to get into San Marcos than it is even San Diego State. Yeah. And so if you want to get a degree and manage the cost for that degree, that's a great option. Doing like a Palomar City, uh, 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 City College and then going on to San Marcos probably keeps your debt under 30 grand, you know, because you still have to live somewhere and eat somewhere. And that's, that's a car payment now. So, um, you know, it's a good one for that. Yeah. Very good considerations. You have to think of the holistic picture. Shouldn't definitely not just go to the most expensive place or really consider staying in, in state to, to yeah. save on future debt. Um, well, that debt thing is a, is a major thing. Um, you know, when I'm looking at, uh, uh, people's um, mortgage capabilities and qualification. Now we've had the student deferment for a couple of years because of COVID, but as that comes off, I have a teacher that I was talking to and she's got a 70 grand bill coming and she's going to have to pay 800 a month for that. That hurts. Yeah, that totally hurts. And that is, <laughs> this may not make the, this may end up on the cutting room floor, but she did ask me, she's like, should I just go pay that off using credit cards and then declare bankruptcy? I'm like, well, I can't recommend that, but student loan debt, you cannot declare bankruptcy on it. You must pay that off. There is no way out of student loan debt. Yeah. So I'm like, well, that's an option. I wouldn't prefer that you would do that. But. That's an interesting strategy. I'd never heard of that one, but nice little hack that you it, shared there. It's a hack. It's also going to keep you out of buying a house for at least four more years. I think any competent bankruptcy judge would look at that and be like, uh, this is fraudulent. And yeah. And yeah, so we're not giving any legal advice here. And I'm sure Jorge is going to cut this whole section out. I was going to flash big disclaimers of like, these clowns are not lawyers. Don't do anything they tell you. And this is just for entertainment value at, at best. Yes, so we need to fill theory, the extra four in, minutes. In a fictional client that you have proposed fictionally, fictionally. their student loans with credit cards. Right. Yeah. I've, I've actually thought about it, but I think you're right about the, the uh, bankruptcy. Uh, judge. Yeah, if they dig into it, they'll find out and be like, this "Yeah." Is and now you're stuck at thirty percent interest instead of nine. And and probably have a, a case of credit card fraud as well against you. That would be rough. Yeah, you don't want any fraud. No <laughs> fraud here. Well, any last thoughts on the the college experience in San Diego and our top universities? I wish I could go back, but nope. I've graduated and I am working and supporting a family. I know. I'm looking forward to my kids going. I think it'll be awesome for them. But I'm not definitely not pushing it as the only option for them. They decide to get into a trade or something else and or go straight to business and skip college i think it, there's ways to do that such a good segue i actually did a little research on trade schools okay because my son is going to go to trade schools and he's like i am not going to college he didn't say it quite like that but i knew what was happening so um he thinks he wants to be an electrician and he he's he's a pretty smart kid but he just does not like school but anyway i looked up the top 10 best trade schools uh, near San Diego. It's interesting when you Google these in, this information, especially with the school districts that we're going to talk about here in a minute. But the research is a little kind of light, lightweight. I don't know exactly how they came to the results of the top 10 of that. So do your research is what I'm saying. But it's interesting. Um, if you are going to go trade schools, or in the trades, you really don't need to get a college degree. And so it's interesting how they broke this out. So there was one here, the League of Amazing Programs. 
programmers trade school. Great. Vocational. I like their name, you know? Yep. If you're going to go into programming, I mean, you can get an electrical engineering degree at UCSD, you know, if you could get in, but if not, they really care how you code. And if you're, if you get good at it and you do it enough, you'll get a good job. Yeah. Let's see, here's one West Coast EMT. So for all the ambulance drivers, a lot of people that want to go on to be fire and police, they need to be EMTs for a while. So don't you have one of your, um, Sierra was a San Diego police officer. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So agencies, yep. she had to go that route to begin with. I didn't realize that. I know they're very lowly paid. Oh, they're hourly. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense that they make minimum wage, but we're responsible for saving people's lives. Yeah. When I look up from the street, you know, I want to make sure that, but they're working hard to get to the next level. So they do definitely. I didn't realize it was just a stepping stone. I thought you potentially that would, should be a career because I don't that person know. should show up as a lifesaver. Yeah. You'd think, but no, they cart you off to the uh, emergency room. So then let's see, you might know a little bit about, have you ever heard of this one? Golden state contractors as a trade school. I didn't know that, but I know there's contracting schools. Yeah. Okay. That learn how to be a GC general contractor. And it's important to have these things, you know? And so one of our uh, core values for, our construction company is education and, and we've said that any any staff that wants to take continuing education to improve to go from a supervisor to an assistant project manager or from a project manager to project court you know whatever it is to go up or if you just know basic work and you want to learn how to be an electrician that takes some, a little bit of knowledge you can't yeah. just put together a no. panel yeah um, or if you want to do pro plumbing properly you know rough stuff is okay but learning how to <laughs> you know pipe a building uh, yeah, can get technical and we want someone that's skilled. So we said we'd pay for our staff to, to get this kind oh, of Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's really neat. I did not yeah. know that. So lots of training. So run through these real quick because we got a time limit here. Okay. So, you know, there's one on phlebotomy, which is interesting because I go to a, a, a real estate office on uh, Tuesday mornings to their trade meeting. And I've been walking by there and it said phlebotomy on the door. I'm like, oh, so now it showed up. I guess it's one of the top uh, tech schools. I think it has to do with fluids, but I, I haven't even looked it up yet. It's drawing blood. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's drawing blood. So like Quest Diagnostic, if you're getting your blood draws, that's phlebotomy. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you can go to college, but with the way technology and everything's changing, it's uh, doing a technical uh, technical institute route is definitely an, an option nowadays. Awesome. Great final thought uh, as an alternative college. Thanks yeah. for joining me, Bob. Thank you. Another great episode of Living in San Diego, and I'm your host, Hennish.